Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are diving into a fundamental concept in C-Sharp multi-threading program. Thread start and parameterized thread start. These are essential when it comes to working with threads, enabling us to achieve parallelism and better manage concurrency in our application. So, before we get started, quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way, you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Thread start and parameterize thread start in Shisha. Before we dive into code examples, let's understand the basics. Thread start and parameterize thread starts are delegates in Shisha that allows us to define the entry points for the thread. These delegates are often used when working with the system dot threading dot thread class to create and manage thread. They are like blueprints that dictate what the thread should execute when it started. If you are not familiar with the concept of delegates, don't worry. I have already created a video series on delegate where you can learn all the nitty gritty details. You might have noticed a link to that video series in the upper right corner of this video right now. I will also provide the link in the description section of that video series for your quick reference. Okay, so let's start with the thread start. Thread start is a simple delegate that represents the method with no parameter and no return value. It's commonly used as the entry point for a thread when we don't need to pass any parameters to the threads method. How to create a thread? If you have seen my previous video of this mastering multi-threading series, you would be aware that thread can be created by two ways. What are the first ways? The first option we have the using thread start delegate and the thread class. Here what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to create an instance of thread start delegate. How we are going to create it? We need to write this statement like this. Thread start, thread delegate is you got new thread start. And here we need to pass this name of the method. Name of method over here is worker thread function. And if you see this method name, we are having this worker thread function. You see this method, we don't have any parameters and no return value as well. So what this method is doing, it is using this for loop for iterating five times. And then it is just printing worker thread, whatever the i value is going to get, we are going to get concatenated with the statement and it's going to get printed into console. Value. Then what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to making this thread to sleep for 1000 milliseconds. That's what this method is doing. Now, once we create an object of thread start delegate, I need to create an object of thread. For that, we need to write this statement like this. Thread thread one is equal to new thread. And here we need to pass this object of thread start delegate. Right now here, object is thread delegate. That's what I'm just passing this thread delegate into thread constructor. So it will give me instance of this thread class that we are storing into thread one variable. So these two statements can be combined in one state. What I'm trying to do in the, this statement, I'm writing thread thread one new thread here inside this constructor itself. I'm creating an instance of the thread start passing this method name over here. these two statements. I'm just clubbing into one state. It is nothing but I'm just writing in the concise way. Now, if you notice this option number two here, I'm going to create a thread class with the help of thread class directly. So right now, what I'm doing thread thread one is equal to new thread the name of the method over here. Not writing any thread start instance and passing over. I'm just directly passing method name over here. What C sub compiler will do for us, it implicitly convert this statement to these two states. Okay, now let's focus on what is parameterized thread start is. Parameterized thread start is a delegate that is used when we need to pass parameters to the threads method. It represents a method that takes a single object parameter and has no return value. Very, very important. Whenever we are going to use parameterized thread start delegate, so the method it points to, it should have a single object parameter has no return value. Keep in mind this. So how to create parameterized thread start object? So it is similar to the thread start delegate instantiation. So we have again here two options. Option number one, using parameterized thread start delegate and the thread class. So here we need to create an instance of this parameterized thread start delegate. That's what I have written. Parameterized thread start, parameterized thread delegate equal to new parameterized thread start worker thread function with parameter. Here I'm passing this name of this method that is going to point it to. Make sure that this method name should have only a single object parameter and has no return value. That's what if you see this method worker thread function with parameter it is going to accept on one object parameter. It returns void type. So what this method is doing? This method is doing we are getting this object right. So this object could be null value or maybe any type of object. We need to convert with this the label int. This object should have null value also, right? Pj as int label, and then we are storing into this variable of null label int int equal to as addition mark, right? And how we are going to proceed? For that, we are going to check what 
value that we have received it has great value or not correct value or not correct type or not based on that we are going to proceed it for that what i'm going to just going to change check input not equal to null. it's not equal to null then it means this input is having some concrete input right so this input will be having some integer value then we are going to iterate how many times based on this but we are going to get it this method that time this for loop it will get executed then this statement will get printed worker parameterized thread plus i this i basically what i'm trying to do is going to concatenate with this console window then i'm just making this thread slip to 1000 milliseconds if input is not an int maybe it's a null value then we are going to print this statement null value or incompatible value pop this else part will get executed in this statement that's what this method is doing now once we create an instance of this parameterized thread start delegate what i'm trying to do over here is i'm just going to create an instance of this thread class what i have written thread thread one is equal to new thread here i'm passing parameterized thread delegate okay so it will be giving me object of this thread class we are storing into thread one variable so these two statements we can write in the concise way. How we are going to write it? Thread thread one is equal to new thread. And inside constructor itself, I'm just going to pass new parameterized thread start. And here is the name of these two statements and this statement are equal. Now let's see to the option number two, where we are going to create thread class directly. How we are going to create a thread? Thread thread one is equal to new thread. And here instead of passing the parameterized thread start object i'm just passing this method directly worker thread function with if we write this type of a statement what c sharp compiler will do for us it will implicitly convert this statement to these two statements parameterized thread start thread delegate is equal to parameterized worker thread function parameter thread thread one is equal to new thread thread delegate these two statements will get created by the compiler if you write this statement right so now we understood how we are going to create a thread object and we have reference of parameterized thread start that points to a particular method that has a single object parameter and has no return okay now we have the object but right now we have seen how to create a thread object how to use parameterized thread but till now we haven't seen how to pass a parameter to thread method right so how we are going to pass it we are going to pass argument in start method of the thread class I have written thread one dot start. I am passing five as an argument. Whatever the value that we are passing over here, it will go and get transferred to this method worker thread function parameter. This is the method that is going to get this five as a value of an as an object. And these things will we are converting into this label int, putting into table, checking whether that input is null or not. If it is not null. Then it is just iterating for loop based on value, and this statement is going to get printed into. And if put is not correct int value or if it's a null, then this statement. But here, if you see, I have passed the five value to it, means five is a proper int value. So this statement for loop five times is going to get okay. So this is all about thread start and parameterized thread start in C sharp, and these are very essential concepts. We should be aware as a developer. Now let's switch to the Visual Studio. See all these things in action. So here we are in Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the thread start and parameterized thread start delegate in C sharp. So for that, what I have done, I have created one console application named thread start and parameterized thread start demo. It has one program.cs program.cs file. The top we are going to add namespace system.threading as a part of a step number one. But I have written a statement using system.threading has one namespace thread start and parameterized thread start demo under that we have one class named program that has one main method which is an entry point this main method what i'm trying to do i'm just printing this statement thread start and parameterized thread start demo in c sharp with the help of console dot right line statement okay now this main method i'm just going to show you how to use thread start delegate and also how to use parameterized thread start you will be seeing one by one so in thread start delegate we need to write this is statement thread start thread delegate is equal to new thread start worker thread function and here worker thread function is nothing but a method that is this thread start delegate is going to point but whenever we are going to mention this method name against the thread start delegate make sure that method should have no parameter and also have only void return type it means no return value 
then only method we need to mention over here against the thread star delegate okay so if you see this worker thread function we said has no return type but we have mentioned this void also it is not accepting any input parameter this is the parameter less function so what this function is doing it is just iterating five times with the help of for loop then printing this statement worker thread whatever the value we are going to get as a part of i we are just going to concatenate with this statement and then printing into this console window then we are making it sleep for 1000 milliseconds that's what this method is doing now once we get an object of thread start delegate we need to create an instance of the thread class what i have written thread thread one is equal to new thread and i'm passing this object of thread start delegate what is the object we have the object thread delegate over we just pass this name of the variable that is storing the object with thread start otherwise we have the option number two also where we can use thread class directly if you see thread thread one is equal to new thread i have mentioned over here worker thread function instead of passing this object of thread start delegate we can finally pass this function name without you know passing this uh, object of this thread start delegate. this is another way how we are going to create a object of thread class while maintaining thread start delegate so ideally what will happen when we write this statement this statement get converted to the option number one state so both are equivalent but for this statement compiler is going to get convert this statement to these two statement implicit anyway i have just mentioned this option number one and that i have that i'm going to use it because i just want to show you the thread start delegate how to use that okay. now come to the parameterized thread start delegate how we are going to create similar way we need to create an instance of this parameterized thread start delegate we need to write parameterized thread start delegate is equal to new parameterized thread start and here we need to pass this name of the method make sure that whenever we are going to pass this name of the method this method should have only one object parameter and it should have return type as a void and only we are able to map against this parameterized thread start delegate to this method you see this method we have written this method like this only return type is the void and it is going to accept a single object parameter so that's why this object parameter why i have mentioned question mark over here as a part of precaution because object could be null so if you are not going to put like this it's just compiler is just going to complain see here this complaining saying the nullability of the reference type in the type of parameter obg or what but worker thread function with parameter ob does not match the target delegate this possibly because of the nullability so whenever we are going to pass you know this object we need to make sure that we need to pass nullable object over it to make this question mark so this is the way how we are going to pass method name the parameterized thread, thread start delegate while instantiating this object this delegate right now once we have this object of this parameterized thread start delegate we can create a thread class object that's what i have written thread thread2 is equal to new thread and here i'm just passing this object of parameterized thread start is nothing but p thread delegate so again this is the two statement i have written similar things we can achieve with this option number two where we can use thread class direct thread thread2 is equal to new thread worker thread function with so we can achieve by this function compiler will be identifying the help of this method is getting pointed by this parameterized thread start delegate. Compiler is smart enough to identify whether we need to create an instance of thread start delegate or whether we need to create an instance of parameterized thread start delegate. Based on that, it will be implicitly created these two states. Now we have instance of this thread class. As a part of step number three, we need to start this. that. What I am going to do thread one dot start here because this thread one we have pointed to thread start delegate. Right? So we don't need to pass any parameter. But means if you see this thread two, which is pointing to the parameterized thread start, right? Parameterized thread start, it is going to point a method that has the parameter that parameter should be object here what i'm doing i'm just passing one parameter over two dot start three what will happen this statement will call this parameterized function right parameterized thread function worker thread function with parameter it is just going to get invoked and this is the object so we need to convert as a int and this is the object question mark because this is the nullable object there is a possibility that object should have none value when we are converting object as int question mark we need to have this nullable int right that's what this input what we are going to accept it would have the null value also without any error that's what we need to write in question mark input to obj as int even though if you are not passing integer we are passing something different so by converting with the help of the as operator it will return as a null value once we get the null value we are going to identify whether this input is having null value or not if not null 
then it will iterate this for loop and then it's just going to print this statement worker parameterized rate plus I. the i value is going to get incremented one by one based on the input value it's just going to get concatenated and print into this console then next statement i'm just making this thread tape for 1000 millis if in the case if you are not passing any value or if you are passing null value or if you are passing incompatible value in that case this else statement will get the and it will print null value or incompatible value pass that will get printed into console let's start this program and see this output okay so output got appear into this console window see this output thread start and parameterized thread start demo in c sub got print if you see worker thread is equal to zero then main thread doing some work worker parameterized thread zero main thread doing some work some work then worker thread one worker parameterized thread one worker thread two worker parameterized thread two worker thread, worker thread four then thread one thread two and main thread have signed. all those things get printed into this console you see sometimes it is working worker thread sometimes it is execute main thread sometimes it is execute parameterized thread and trick switching is happening over here that's what some time is allocated to the main thread some time is allocated to worker threads is allocated to the worker parameterized thread the statement worker thread function it is executing worker thread zero worker thread one worker thread two worker thread three worker thread four right so why because it is executing for loop over here five times start with zero so it will go up to four right so that's what zero one two three and what print right similarly if you see worker thread function with parameter here what we are doing whatever the input that we are receiving right based on that this for loop is going to get executed see here i have passed this input parameter over here as a three right thread two dot start i have passed three so it is going to execute three times over here it will start with zero and here i have mentioned three so it will print zero one two that's it so three times it going to get executed that's what uh, worker thread parameter thread zero worker parameterized thread one worker parameterized thread two what print right and this main thread doing some work it is getting printed from this main thread that we have written after starting these thread right i have written this main thread is doing some work main thread is doing work it is just going to print 10 times this statement main thread main thread doing some work and that's why this main thread doing some work got printed okay so right now we have seen the example now what i'm trying to do i'm just going to pass over here null okay what will happen i'm expecting instead of you know using this worker parameterized thread get printed null value or income because i'm just passing the null value to this object right? with the help of a start method let me see how this side behaves okay so let me go and execute this program okay so output got appear into this console see this null value or incompatible value path got printed okay so now let me pass instead of you know null value let me pass some string value let's say i'm just passing a v over here now i'm just passing this ravi what will happen this is just going to print this because it's just try to convert with the label in but it is not an int it's a string right so ideally this conversion not happen successfully instead of that it will return the null value going to get captured into this input variable we are checking input is not equal to null and then this is statement if it is null then this else part will get executed in this case here it will be null because ruby is not an int conversion will be unsuccessful instead of that it will return the null value with the help of ai object null value will get stored and this is statement so let me execute this program and show this output to see this is statement got printed null value or incompatible value Okay, so that brings me to end of my session. To sum up, in today's video, we have explored thread start and parameterized thread start, which are essential components when working with thread. G -shop. Understanding how to use them can greatly enhance the efficiency and parallelism of our app. Very, very important. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the other great videos in this channel. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.